Hello and welcome to Mimi's Sketchbook. Today my illustration was inspired by Paul David Tripp's book, New Morning Mercies, and I am reading his devotion for October 4th. And I mention the book and the date in case you would like to read along with me. I have a blood good Japanese maple growing close to the front of my house. And I purposely placed it there because I know that Japanese maples need protection from the harsh winds and cold of the winters where I live. The tree is planted on the north side of my house, and the only part of it that gets sun is the very top where it can reach up over the roof and the sun can hit it. And if you look at the tree from the street, it's a beautiful blood red. But if you look at the tree through my front window, all you see are the lower branches that are growing in total shade, and they remain green all summer long, until recently. When the days started growing shorter and the temperature started to drop, the leaves on those bottom branches finally turned red. And it made me wonder what had happened to those leaves that the color finally changed. Well, of course, we know what it is, and we probably all learned about it in school at a very young age, and that is photosynthesis. But I looked it up just to make sure I remembered the process correctly. So here it goes. The purpose of the leaf is that it is a food making factory for a plant. Each leaf takes in carbon dioxide from the air and water from the ground up through the roots and the stem to the leaves. Then, with the power of sunlight, the water and carbon dioxide are made into sugar and starch which feed the plant. And that is called photosynthesis. And the chemical in the leaf that causes all this to happen is called chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is what makes our leaves look green in the spring and summer. But in the fall, when days grow shorter and the temperature starts to drop, this signals the chlorophyll to stop the factory. As the chlorophyll begins to decay, the green color disappears and a chemical called carotenoid gets brighter. Carotenoids is a chemical that gives plants and fruits and vegetables a yellow and orange color. Carrots, carotenoids, get it? But some leaves turn red and that happens when a leaf continues to make sugar. And when that sugar builds up in the leaf, it turns into a chemical called anthrocyanide. And that anthrocyanide turns the leaves red. So between the car carotenoids and the anthrocyanids, we get a beautiful array of yellow orange, and red leaves in the fall. Today in his devotion, Paul Tripp talks about sin. And he says, sin kidnaps our desires, and distorts our thoughts. It controls our tongues and rules our behavior. It saps our resolve and weakens our knees, and it leaves us lame, weak, and unable. 
so that's what sin does to us. How are we ever supposed to battle it and overcome it and live in a way that pleases God? I definitely know that on my own, I can't battle sin. Hey, there are days when I can't even deny myself a dish of ice cream, let alone putting whipped cream and nuts on top of it. So if I can't win a battle against a dish of ice cream, how am I supposed to battle against sins in my heart and my mind? Well, here is the good news. When we ask Jesus into our hearts, he fills us with his Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit lives in us. It actually takes up residence in us. And Paul Tripp says that the Holy Spirit gives us the motivation and the power to defeat sin and live the life that pleases God. So what do leaves have to do with the Holy Spirit living in us? Well, earlier today when I was thinking about how the leaves change their color, that actually helped me to understand the Holy Spirit working in me better. These leaves don't just turn color on their own because it's fall. Remember how each little leaf is a factory filled with chlorophyll, using the sunshine to process the water and the carbon dioxide into sugar for photosynthesis? And the leaves just don't change color because it's fall, but because of what is in them is actually reacting to what's going on outside of them. I know that on my own, I don't have the power to defeat sin, but the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit living in me has the power to defeat sin and to help me live a life that is pleasing to God. And one of my favorite verses is Philippians 2.13 that says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Isn't it wonderful that we're not in this battle alone? So thank you for joining me today at Mimi's Sketchbook. I hope that this was an encouragement to you. And if it was, could you please give it a thumbs up or maybe even share it with someone else. And in that way, YouTube will help us to spread the good news. So thank you and God bless.